Thank you. Um, today we're going to just talk about a prospect that uh, actually Coach Cassano showed me about 11 years ago. And I uh, just started to coach a provincial team with Randy. And we put that in. It worked. And went to the university. It worked. High school worked. Club school worked. And this year again, the provincial team is the same prospect we used. So we're talking about uh, a quick topic for 30 minutes. We thought this was kind of important. And over the summer, we saw different press breaks. And this one was very simple, very easy, very clean. Yes, it allowed for space. Oh, speak. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It allowed for a lot of space for players <laughs> to use their abilities. And if they didn't want to use their ability, they could pass the ball. OK? So um, the funny thing is we got together and said, OK, let's, let's get this presentation going. Let's not screw it up. So we're talking about it, and Randy went over the original rules that he showed me about 11 years ago. I think he got it at a Jack Donahue clinic, and I had screwed it up over the years. So I had changed it just because of personnel and stuff that I was doing. So Randy's going to go over the original rules that, that he learned and, and passed on a while ago that are simple and they're clear so that you can use with kids, especially if they're multi-positional. I changed it because I was at a playing with different players. I had bigs, dedicated bigs, and guards, and I wanted to end up in a certain way into my offense, especially since the shot clocks come in and you have less time to kind of find spots after you break pressure. So um, some of the reasons we like it are just it's easy to put in, it's simple. There's rules that yeah, kids actually can know, okay, the ball goes here, I go here. Uh, it allows for good spacing and allows for kids to use their abilities and attack open space. So it's not always waiting for the next pass. If there's a read and you have ability, you can go. And it's easily adapted to your personnel, which at the end, we'll just make some changes and show what I did with the provincial team this summer. Okay, so Randy's just, he's, these are the CP girls for this year, the 15 U um, CP girls. And he's, I think we talked, 90 minutes maybe? Yeah, not, maybe not even. A yeah. total of 90 minutes, maybe four or five practices, and they're at where they're at with this drill. So it's pretty easy to put in. This is youth age. These are 14 and 13 year old girls. And they got a pretty good handle on it. So I'll turn it over to Randy. OK, uh, thanks very much. Uh, like Dan said, uh, the reason why I, I like this press uh, so many years ago is that uh, it is simple. And uh, I, I guess the best part of it, it gives our, our kids down the floor just uh, rules. OK, so I'm going to set them up right now. Uh, Naya, can I get you in the ball, please? We're going to have our, our one, two, and three player. Uh, uh, as our, our perimeter players uh, in the front court. Okay, uh, Claire, can I get you moving to the midcourt area? And Sarah, take the deep spot. Uh, let's go with uh, Anna and Sonam to start. Yeah, okay. We'll flip the other two in after. Okay, so starting with our inbounder. Okay, like most press breaks, okay, we ask her to get outside, clear the board. Okay, either side, either side. We told our girls, and you guys line up like this a lot. Uh, right now they're in kind of like a stagger, all right? We want them to get the ball outside the lane and as high as possible. What don't you want to do? Anna? You don't want to go where? Where don't you want to go? Okay, she doesn't want to go down to the coffin corner where she might get trapped, okay? So, uh, once we want the ball, they have to get open. Go ahead, uh, entry. Okay, so freeze. Okay, so right here, there's our, there's our entry pass. Okay, now. Once it's open, the person in the middle, their role is very simple. She follows the first pass. Okay, so Claire's going to sprint to the sideline. Oh, freeze, 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 freeze. Hold on, right there. She's going to follow the first pass. Okay, and then if we get that, if we get that option, we've probably broken pressure and we're just attacking the basket. We're going down the floor. Okay, go. Let's go. Finish, please. Okay, stop again, please. Okay, so we just call that side. All right, now hold on, freeze, freeze, freeze. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna split, get the ball in bounds. Okay, and now uh, just to add to that, 
Sarah's rule down here, she's waiting, you probably watched her. Her rule is she follows the second pass. She follows the second pass. But in that, in that case there, we entered the ball, we, uh, we broke pressure, and we just attack. We're going down the floor, okay? So this time, uh, we're going to go side, side. Okay, let's try side, side. Side, side, and attack. Good. Okay, so you saw entry pass, side, Sarah followed the second pass side, and we attacked. We broke pressure. Okay, you might get that early. All right, good teams to start taking that away. All right, next one. Okay, let's uh, make the entry pass. Okay, freeze. Okay, so reverse. All right, so we're looking like this. Hold on a sec. Follow the first pass. Okay, so we're looking now freeze. Okay, so right now, here's the options, and these are all the options you see in so many press breaks. Side, middle, fine middle, and reverse. Okay? Okay, Anna's just got, Anna's got to find middle wherever that is. She's, she's got, defending where the defense is, she's got to find the gap in the middle. Okay, so now let's go, uh, let's go, uh, let's go side middle. Okay, go and attack. So that's side middle, finish. Okay, run side middle again, girls, coming down please. Okay, now, this time, okay, I'm going to call out what I want. This time I want side, side, middle, please. Okay, attack. Side, side, middle, attack. Not super clean right now, but we haven't been doing this very long, but they're doing a pretty good job. Okay, now uh, let's do that one more time. Side, middle. Good, attack. Okay, good. Okay, and then let's do uh, the next option. Okay, let's go reverse. Okay, now we're going to go, let's go, let's run reverse. Entry pass, side, middle, reverse. Okay, we had a problem there. What was the problem there? Okay, we have it over and back there. Okay, and that's, that's the danger of that. Let's run that again, please. Okay, so you try, got to try and get to our side of center. So, freeze. Okay, no, no. Okay, freeze. Okay, so I don't want you to leave till the ball gets up here. Okay, so let's bring that back again. Okay, freeze that. Okay, go. Run. Okay. Now exit. Fill. Good. Well done. Okay, let's walk through that again. Okay, we're doing reverse. Entry pass. Sideline, middle, reverse. Yep, good. And again, one more time. Hey, slow down a little bit. Be a bit more. Girls, girls, pay attention. Okay, so you're looking. Make your read. Sideline, middle, and then reverse. All right? Okay, slow down a little bit. Okay, go. Sideline, middle, reverse. Okay. Okay, we sideline, we got middle, we got reverse. Good. Okay. So those are all the three options initially. And then the last one that we've taught the girls so far is that if the two guards are denied, if the two guards are denied, so they stack and split or whatever they're going to do, okay, they split wide, and then we, we bring down the three-second person. Okay, come down, she calls ball, and they turn and go. Once again, girls, three second person, please. <laughs> it's okay, do it again. Go, go, go. Turn and go, fly, attack. Those are all the options right now. Dan? Yep. Where are we at? Did you want to see, does anybody want to see anything else again? Or any questions so far? Any questions so far? Yeah. 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 
you're throwing a deep pass, is that what you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can flip flop. Sometimes, depending if we want to maybe get a, maybe a stronger person, uh, quite often in high school I had the four, right now we're using one, two, and three. Uh, sometimes we put our four person back there and we put a, maybe a three there, maybe a bit better ball handler, maybe a bit better at attacking the basket. So yeah, flip flop, yeah, for sure. Depending on your personnel, yep, good question. Yeah? I, 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 I'm sorry. Quarter court, correct, but if you're up, you're more match to get back here. Yeah. Any changes or what No, not really. No, um, we just fill, fill those spots still. Yeah, still fill those spots. And uh, moving down equal distance. Because it's good against a half-court trap. Uh, we've, if people have tried three-quarter against us and it's worked fine. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so those are the, those are the original rules. And what I ended up doing with older players is I switched the four and the three. So if Naya, you come to the middle. And the reason we did this was we played a lot of high-low stuff. So you see in one, of the, one or two of the options, you end up with two bigs on one side. And we wanted to end up so we could just flow right into whatever we were doing. So that will depend on what you're doing offensively. But this is something we adapted to. I'm, I've always had usually two bigs at least and do a high-low action. So let's just walk through, do you split or stagger and get the ball? Okay. And then we fill spots. Okay, stop here. And then so you're filling. So the rule is first guard gets the ball. The guard who doesn't get the ball stays in the center lane. And it's really important she stays spaced. And she's sprinting down the middle trying to get a relay or a relay. Okay, so I don't get it. Go to now, you're on the sideline, butt to sideline. Okay, and then Sarah, these were the changes. So the original one has this, this, uh, the second middle person following the second pass. I asked ours to go weak side and create space. So now, if she can go, she can go. I'm flying at full speed, and I, my job is to stay middle and then exit in front of her, spacing out to the corner looking for a three. Right, and what this did is this opened up this floor. And then we'd fill in, and we'd have a trail big. So I took someone's spot here. Who was this? Was it Lauren? Okay. And then we had a big low. You're the trail, and Vanessa would find the weak side of the floor. You understand? So you'd either, we'd start with a two-man game over here, or reverse it and start our continuous ball screen over there. So just a real simple change, but we flow right into it. And this pressure works against man. It works against zone. And we don't waste any time getting to spots. A lot of times there'll be pressure in a situation where you break it and then you got to reconfigure into your positions. So we just saved a little bit of time. Um, so that was really the, the only the rule change that we had from the original rules. The question is, that you always get, you come to a clinic and you see something and maybe I like it, then you go to practice, you go, how do I drill it? Like, how do I get better at it? I saw something, I wrote it down. And I've done this a lot, you write it down, and then it comes time to practice with your team, and you're not comfortable enough to teach it. So you just push it aside and you go back to doing what you feel comfortable doing. Um, so the way we could wrap this out is we had a nice conversation last night. And I told Mike, I said, you're gonna make me look like an idiot. <laughs> but, so the five and all, to teach and understand responsibilities. And then we add, so I have two pennies. Where's my two extras? Well, we didn't get you in yet. Oh yeah, you guys been in. No, so been in you guys are blue. And what we'll do is we'll run press break. Okay, you guys can run the original one that you guys are familiar with. Okay? And we'll just have two defenders that can do whatever they like. Because of all the rules that Randy showed you to, to start with, you'll have three options along the, the uh, free throw line extended. Because you have the three second person. So they can only deny two. So it helps with the decision making which uh, Mike and Brian are, are big on, and correctly so. And it just allows for a gradual learning with more game-like situations. Okay, go ahead, just run it. Next one, third, three second. Oh, stop, freeze, please. Okay, yeah, sorry, Mike. So your job, rewind, please. Okay. So your job is to screen, stagger, or split, and then occupy. So if she's denying you, great, you've done your job, but you've got to get wide, outside, outside. So she's either denying you or she's not. 
and now that allows that middle lane for Claire to come straight down the middle, freeze. If they're doing a job being very aggressive, this is automatic relay pass into numbers. Throw it ahead. They should have transition opportunities right there. Okay? So that's just a rewind from the three second person, why that read happens. Okay, let's go again. Free play, defense, do whatever you like. You can guard middle, you can guard both guards. Just make them make choices. Let's go, someone's open. What's your job, straight down, come back, turn and go. Good, try and score, try and score, Claire, who's open? Hey, freeze, freeze. You're open. Like once you cross here, you got 15 footer, 12 footer lip. You got two girls and you were trying to score quickly. All right, you guys are trying to just get a layup and you're almost overpassing. So what we're trying to do is just find a quick read and score, be aggressive. The other point we didn't mention is some people's philosophy are break pressure and let's set up our offense. No. Randy and I have had lots of talks. Ours is break pressure and turn into transition. If they're gonna press, they're gambling, we're gonna make them pay a price. All right, we wanna be aggressive. It's more fun, the kids buy in, and it ends up transition baskets, as Brian was talking about earlier, the analytics favor transition hoops. This, someone's pressing us, they're giving us transition off a dead ball. That's great, I get my transition in the real game, plus I get a few extra positions of transition if we handle it right. Okay, let's go again. Try and score as quick as you can. Layup, jump shot, anything that's within your range that you think you can score. Find somebody. Head Lauren, squat up, attack, Claire, attack. Good. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And what we do is we would, we're running out of bodies. Okay, go ahead, keep going, girls. We would add five on three, five on four, five on five, and then after a while, after a while when you're comfortable with it, what you just had is after, say if you're in a, um, say a high school season, maybe a month into it, you just be playing press versus press break 10 or 15 minutes out of your press plan, that's it. Five on five live. So we had a two to one press at uh, Oak Park and I've taken that from Randy and I've used it all the way through. This summer, that's all we did. Two to one press back to a matchup. This transition and free play transition and simple ball screen offense. That was everything for us and it was very successful. And so when we get to this press versus press break, it's fun, you make it competitive, you have time limit, you play mini games or you just play like a game and keep score. But they, it's a controlled scrimmage and they just always have to take the ball out other than when it's a steal or in transition. Okay? Go ahead, girls. Give another rep or two. Down here, good. Full middle, sprint middle V. Come back. Look ahead. Push the ball yourself, too. Are you open? Take a shot there. Okay, you can hold up right there. The, now, the situation happened, this is the press that I got comfortable with, and I, press break, sorry, that I got comfortable with and I liked, and then I went and coached my daughter's team, and uh, the other girls, not here. She was on it too. And so we had two or three girls that played a lot of basketball, and we had four or five brand new girls that signed up and literally said, I signed up, I want to start basketball, which is great, but we had a real dichotomy between the ability of the girls. So, and it was middle school, it was grade eight. We had an hour and 15 minute practice right after school, so that really means a 45 minute practice by the time they get their gear on and the giggles out and get going. So we really, really made it an easier version. So let's just take the blues off, thank you. And all we did was just get Claire and, uh, let's put Naya over there, the half court. Uh, Claire, you throw it in. Like Vanessa, you come here and you stay there. And you start on the point. So we were, we were yelling, just diamond. It was easy too, because for the younger ages, we used to I call it diamond. And it's basically a, a two hit wonder, if, if that. And we didn't have much problem with it because it was grade eight basketball and no one was really had that much experience under their belt. We put our best ball handler here. We put two decent ball handlers wide. And we had our, our finisher at the end. And we had an inbounder with some size who can make some passes. I think we put Taylor there because she had a good arm. So at that age, we had a girl with a good arm. That was big. She's off to the side. She just tried her best to get open. And 
seven and a half times out of ten, that was enough. And now we just ran right into it. So she just went, you filled your lanes, Sarah went weak or strong side, and you filled the weak side. Okay? And it was as simple as that. We spaced the floor, we allowed our best ball handler some room, and we had this type of simple four-out offense that we ran into. Let's back it up. That's the one hit. The two hit wonder is if we did face some pressure and Lauren couldn't get open, so I'm denying Lauren, she's here. She stays in the middle area here between lane to lane, trying to work to get the ball, and I'm denied. The three second rule still applies. Both these girls sprint down wide, wide, and you make, an, you make a choice, and then you go, and you go, and you fill. And between, so what's your job, Lauren? She has the ball, she didn't send it to you. Where do you think you go? Back it up a little bit? Right? Yeah, so Vanessa's a good ball handler too. She got it wide, she's pushing it. If you can sprint and get in front of her, you can give her an option, you can fill behind. Right, and now we finish with a four out, it's pretty balanced. Okay, that's pretty good. So that was going down in age group or years of experience. And maybe the ideal way, I've never used this, but I've saw a couple videos on it, is let's back it up. So say you're really getting pressure, you really got a lot of times uh, trouble getting in, let's go four across. Okay, so let's line up four across. Let's put our two guards in the middle. Let's put our, our taller girls on the outside. Okay, Vanessa, Lauren, pinch it. So four lanes, right? And you can have different actions. Um, I think Rick Suffield, Rick Suffield used to use this one, where if, if we were up and this happened, we'd have a cross screen. Actually, they start the girls a little bit back. They'd come down, have a cross screen, and then she'd just take off and get a touchdown just to kind of put icing on the cake. But you can do any type of screening action. You can start your girls back. So let's start the two wings back, just maybe here. All right, you do some, some action there, create some, uh, try and create a, a defensive decision. So screen and pop and within your lanes. They come down, pick somebody, stop. So the end concept is, as Randy mentioned, you form a box around the ball. So this is like just motion press break. So there's the ball. Where would you go? Sideline, middle V, Naya deep, diagonal overthrow. We're back, hey, we gotta help her out. Right, we're still press breaking. So we just form the box. Throw the ball anywhere you like. Form a box around Lauren and give a diagonal overthrow. Logically, where we go? V would sprint ahead. Naya, Naya may go there, Claire go there. We got a box, we got a middle. We got a sideline, we have a reverse. So you would maybe fill that vacuum in the middle and you got a diagonal overthrow. Okay? So it'd be nice to get to that place and especially with you have young athletes where you don't want to say you're a big and you're a guard. Everyone can kind of play everywhere because you're not dictating. And they just understand the concept and they get to free play a little more. And then you can use your imagination, whatever your personnel dictates. You can set up anything you like as long as you're just forming boxes. A box is moved down the floor. I think we're done. Okay. I think we're done. Uh, we're out of time. We're out of time. We're out of, uh, we're out of material. Questions? That's good. Yeah. Okay. You know, and the other piece I had here for for the teaching purposes was the five and zero, oh, five and two, five and three, four, five, and then and then the full gameplay. The other piece would be video and whiteboard or video and chalkboard talk would really help with this type of stuff because it's just understanding the spacing, and especially with younger kids. Uh, I keep telling the story, I, I was coaching U of M, and then I went down and coached my daughter, who was eight at the time, and I was teaching wind deny and all this stuff, and they had no idea of the spacing on the floor. They're running all over the place, and I just, I really had to, to, to really learn how to, to teach uh, the skills. I just knew how to do them, and in a big picture, as adults, we have a lot of experience we could paint that picture in our head and think that they understand it, but their experience is a lot less. So any aid, especially visual, video and drawing it through. We got magnet boards that y'all got today. Those are great. With the younger teams, they all sit around like story time and you move it and they really get a good picture on that. It really is good. Okay, uh, what, what's one? Time, you kill time. Any questions? <laughs> yes. Thank <laughs> you.
For, for the, the pressure side of it, if we're pressing it? I think that the, the stopping the middle penetration and, and the sideline, the first two. So sideline and middle end up hurting you a lot. Reverse, a lot of times you give up when you're going to gamble. And we say give up, we don't care if they reverse the ball. This summer we played a soft 2-2-1. Two, two, and it allowed us to kill time on a 24 second clock. We yelled tight all the time, which means we took our box and we shrunk it to the volleyball lines. And all we wanted was them not to go middle, not to go sideline and to reverse it, and then reverse it. And then maybe some guy tries to be a hero and throws a dangerous pass, we get a steal or two. But we wanted to start their offense with 12 seconds on the clock. That was our goal on the stop. And I remember when I first started coaching with Randy, I was a young guy, all real great. I want to do one, two, one, one. I want to trap everything and gamble. And Randy's like, no, no, two, two, one. We can jump when we want. We keep him in front of us. And as time wore on, he, he was right. Because you do the aggressive, it's good for a few hits, but the higher level you go, they'll just shred you. They'll just throw over top and you're chasing. Right? Does that answer? Yeah. Yeah. We, we did it with that age group. Um, 14, 13, 13, 14 year old girls, and we did a 2 2 1. And it kind of, it's still, it's even kind of close to man to man ish. You know what I mean? Because you're still kind of in a shell a little bit. So it's not even a bad transition to teaching the proper uh, shell, so to say. Because the way you help and rotate is very similar. And it allows you a little success out as well. So, I mean, that's the one I like now, just personally. And I just sit in that. Until someone, you know, really destroys it or we just pull it off and, or we back it up and tighten it up. But we kind of mainly stick in that. Unless you're down and you're really desperate, then you start gambling more. <laughs>